All right, good morning, class. Um, this uh, presentation here, this video is going to walk you through some of the highlights of this presentation, an introduction to dimensioning, which is an important presentation you'll probably want to have access to and look at during today and the following class's activities. Uh, introduction to dimensioning. So we have a multi-view sketch here of an object, and uh, we're just going to walk through a couple of uh, things that people could do wrong when it comes to dimensioning drawings, and then you also see correct uh, interpretations of it. So rule number one is very basic. Basically, it's the dimensioning is supposed to reflect the object size, not the scale it is on the paper. So obviously scales are going to be different. Uh, in this case here you'll see the dimension part is three quarters of an inch, but the actual dimension on the actual part is two inches. So you would use two inches on the drawing. And you can tell this is supposed to be two inches based on this dimension right here from the front view. Remember these line up for a reason so you can use dimensions in between views. Rule number two says you're going to indicate overall dimensions in the three principal directions of width, depth, and height. Whenever you place these dimensions, though, you have to place them furthest away from the object so that what are called nested dimensions are before it. So see, this error is right here. These, this two should actually be up here, where this one should be down here. Same deal over here. This one should be over here. This five, this half, excuse me, should be here. So if I, you'll see there's the highlights, and then that's where they should be. Also, there's another rule, but we'll talk about that, why they moved them over to the right here. For the third rule, uh, all dimensions are, of course, necessary to, re to reproduce or inspect the part. So in this case here, we're missing enough information that we really need to know what this is and what this is, because without knowing it, we are not able to accurately replicate the part. We can assume and try to calculate, but again, that's the point. They don't want you to have to use the proportions on the drawing to figure out what the actual dimension is. So dimensions here would be considered missing dimensions. This part without these dimensions would be considered underdimensioned. So those dimensions should be here. Rule number four, don't include, for the other reason, don't include unnecessary dimensions. So if you overdimension it, it clutters up the drawing. As you can see from this drawing, this is just way too many dimensions. Uh, you'll have to knock out most of these uh, dimensions to see that, you know, we have duplicated dimensions and things that are wrong. Uh, also, don't include chain dimensions that add up to a given overall dimension. What I mean by that is, you see how this is two inches here. We got a 0.75 measure and a 0.75 measure, and then we have a 0.5 measure. Well, I'd like to say we can do our own math, right? You, you know, we're old enough that we can take care of that. So we don't really need to have these particular uh, sum up to two. We know that, okay? So it would be incorrect to include these two dimensions in the drawing, and we would have to put it like that. Rule number five. Dimension should be attached to the view that best shows the contour of the feature to be dimensioned. So what I mean by that is, you see how this top view here, well, it's really hard to tell that this, this, and this are really on different heights. So these dimensions here are actually better placed on this view where you can see that there are different heights to the, um, to the feature. Similarly, the same deal over here. These parts here should really be over here for the same reason. Okay, so that's why most of the dimensions of the drawing are correct to put on the front view because the front view is the one with the most um, detail, most contours. Rule six, whoops, excuse me, rule six. The dimension should be attached only to one view. So extension lines should not connect between two views. Most people don't have a problem with this, but basically if you're gonna dimension a part on the front view, make sure the extension lines are both pointing to the front view. So having this 2.0 dimension right here and this 1.0 dimension here, it's hard to see because the video cuts off right here, but right here there's a line that's pointing from the front view to the right view as well. Uh, you'll see in the PowerPoint when you load it up yourself. Uh, but here it's very easy to see. These extension lines are definitely incorrect. You don't wanna put a top extension and a front extension you want the extension lines to come off of the same view. Rule seven, whenever possible, locate dimensions between adjacent views. So what they mean by this is see how these dimensions are off to the left and underneath. Well, it's incorrect to put them there because it's actually better to put these dimensions where you can kind of see what the dimensions would be if you were to look up to the next view. So if I look, so for example, this is two right here from the front, but if I look at the top, I should also be able to look down and see, oh, there's two. This is also two inches wide this way. And the same deal over here on the right view. I wanna be able to see, well, if this one is here from the front, it also should be one here on the right without having to kind of jump around the page looking for those particular sizes. So it's correct to put dimensions in between views where possible. Obviously, this one here is unavoidable because of the contour on the left side of the thing. It would be incorrect to put it all the way over here because then these extension lines would cut through the object. That's a future rule you'll see in just a second. Rule eight, avoid dimensioning the hidden lines. So um, you'll, you'll know that one of the uh, questions on the pretest that you just took um, 
asks you to uh, determine which view or which um, uh, what the, the mistake dimension was. Well, it turns out this is the one right here. This 0.75 dimension here is dimensioning to this hidden line. Uh, that's incorrect. You can't dimension to a hidden line. You have to dimension to object lines only. That's why that dimension belongs over here. Rule 9. Don't place dimensions on the object unless you absolutely have to do it. All of these dimensions would be very, very incorrect um, to have them within the object. The only time you really want to do within an object is if it's like a hole or a cutout or something that you really just no other way to dimension it other than putting it on the object. So for the most part though, most of the things that you're going to be dimensioning in this activity and the uh, project for the second marking period are not going to require you to do that. So it's incorrect to dimension inside of the object. Rule 10, don't cross a dimension line with another dimension line or another extension line. This goes back to one of the rules we just saw before, uh, where it dealt with the overall dimension being furthest away. Well, another problem with it was that the dimension lines actually cut through the extension lines here and here. So that's incorrect to do. You want those dimension lines to not cut across their own extension lines or other extension lines. So if you have to move things around, you should do it. All right, let's move on. Okay, rule 11, avoid crossing dimension or extension lines with leader lines. So same deal here. You see this um, part here is dimensioned, but you'll see that this leader line is crossing these dimension and extension lines. Uh, so it's incorrect to put it here. This leader line would be best put down on the bottom left here. So you'll see that's where it should be. It should be away from other dimensions. Okay, leader lines should point toward the center of the feature and should not occur horizontally or vertically. So leader lines should be angled so that you can tell what they're pointing to, so they don't confuse them with object lines or other extension lines. So these two here would be incorrect. This would be the correct way to do it. Rule 13. Dimension numbers should be centered between arrowheads except when using stack dimensions. Stack dimensions should then be staggered. So it would be incorrect to have this, this, and this because this is extremely confusing to read. So it's best to put the staggering of the dimensions such as this. Rule 14. In general, a circle is dimensioned by its diameter an arc by its radius. So that's a pretty much just a statement. So this part here of the, uh, of the part should be labeled with an R and a half inch radius. So the center of it would be right about here where the mouse is. Um, and then it would be 0.25 inches that way. And then this here circle is a half inch in diameter. Holes should be located and sized in the view that shows the feature as a circle. So that makes sense. So uh, though this is the hole in the part, as you can tell from the ISO view, but putting the hole size and how it, and its structure, in this case it goes through the object, that's what the through means, uh, over here in the right view would be incorrect. Also, dimensioning the location of the hole is also incorrect by putting it in the top view here. Again, we're A, dimensioning to a center line, which is like dimension to a hidden line. We want to do it sometimes, but we want to do it to the feature or part, uh, part of the feature drawing, I'm sorry, excuse me, um, that would show uh, where it would be located and where it shows up as a circle. Rule 16, holes are located by their center lines and they may be extended and used as, as extension lines. So you see the, this is a cent these are center lines on this hole. There's a center line over here as well. Um, these can be and should be used as extension lines to dimension the hole to show where it's supposed to be. You're supposed to locate the center of the hole so the, per so the producer of the part knows where to locate it. So it's an error to not locate the center of a hole. Okay, and there's your references at the end of the PowerPoint. Um, so what I uh, want you to do uh, in this, in this uh, lesson today, I've, uh, for the first day of class, I have put part one up on, uh, on Edmodo. And it's a Word document, and you're gonna type into the Word document. The, um, Directions in the Word document should ask you to actually um, put in rules that show why somebody made a mistake that they made. Okay, so here's the here's that document uh, downloaded off of Edmodo. It says Activity 3 4 Linear Dimensions. I've split it into two parts. Uh, you'll have access to part one during the first class, and then part two will be uploaded during your second class. So what you'll see here in this, in this you'll see a multi-view drawing. You'll see that it's got dimensions. You'll see it's isometric view. Uh, and then you're going to be asked to identify four, in this case, four errors, and also what the rules are behind it. So for example, the first one's done for you. Uh, 4A and 7, it says there's a double dimension and also a wrong side. So there's a dimension that's doubled in the drawing. Uh, and also, and this is where, um, and you would also put an A as to where it would be. So for example, the double dimension wrong side, which is rule 4A and 7, those, ro those rules are in the PowerPoint. So you're going to reference the PowerPoint on this. Uh, and then you would put an A wherever there's a double dimension um, uh, in this particular drawing. So for example, this here, 
and this here are considered double dimensions. Also, this here and this here are also double dimensions, um, and the wrong side, uh, this part, this really dimension here should really be here on the front here, so that's why it's an error to have it here, 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 and here. So this dimension shows up four times. So that's just an example. Uh, you're also going to find three other errors um, and what the reasons are for it that are separate from these uh, B, C, and D in this case. Uh, and then you'll see there's another one where you have, uh, in this case, uh, four more errors to identify. Uh, use the rules and then use the reasons. And then here's another one, uh, other errors here that are, pop that are uh, a problem. I will mention uh, one of the errors in this particular uh, drawing is this dimension right here. Sloped edges should not be dimensioned. That's not in the rule guides, uh, but that's obviously one of the errors in here. Um, that sloped edges should not be dimensioned uh, on, a, on a drawing. So um, unless you can find it in the PowerPoint, I, I'm pretty sure I, I did not see it as I went through it in this video. Uh, and then multi-view drawing here, there's again uh, 10 more reasons uh, to figure out. So obviously you want to work together and try to come up with as many of these errors as possible. Uh, this is a bit of a tricky uh, assignment for you to do, so that's why you're going to have a good portion of today's class and also uh, a good, probably a good portion of the following class to really delve into this and figure out what's going on. Uh, an answer key will be posted at the end of the week once everyone has submitted or everyone's had an opportunity to submit it. But once I post the answer key, obviously uh, further submissions will not be accepted. So if you don't submit before um, Thursday or Friday, depending on which period of class you are in, uh, you're liable to not have any credit for this assignment. So please make sure uh, that you at least give some effort to uh, this particular assignment. All right, so good luck. Uh, don't forget to post questions on Edmodo. Uh, have a great day, uh, and good luck.